Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Aberti, CEO and founder of the Content Marketing Plaza, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Now, if you are looking for a big breakthrough in your business and you want to talk with me for a little bit, I do have free strategy calls available at marketcabrity.com slash strategy, which will be in the show notes. But another really great way to grow your business is by using books. And I've had the honor of interviewing a bunch of really awesome authors. Uh, today's guest, um, if you wonder like how do authors actually grow their books and get more publicity. That's what this guy does. He will take your book and he will turn it into a USA Today, Wall Street Journal bestseller, all these big categories, because that's exactly what he's been able to do for his clients. So today's guest who will be joining us soon, he's a book publicist and president of West Wind Communications, a public relations and marketing firm that has a special knack for working with authors to help them get all the publicity they deserve and more. He works with best-selling authors and self-published authors promoting all types of books, whether it's their first book or their 15th. He's handled publicity for books by CEOs, CIA officers, Navy SEALs, homemakers, fitness gurus, doctors, lawyers, and adventurers. So he's got quite a diverse range of people who he serves. And those clients have been featured on places like Good Morning America, Fox and Friends, CNN, ABC News, New York Times, Nightline, Time, PBS, LA Times, USA Today, Washington Post, Women's World, Howard Stern, and so many others on that list as well. But let's get to our guest today. So today's guest for episode 249 of the Breakthrough Success uh, podcast is none other than Scott Lorenz. Scott, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, Mark. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that introduction too. Appreciate it. It's a, a great pleasure to be here today. Scott, I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. I know we first met at the National Publicity Summit. We were uh, chatting a little bit beforehand though. So definitely great to have you on the show. I look forward to this uh, because a lot of people, they want to figure out how do I get my books more exposure. Uh, but one of the things I know about you is you do a lot of other stuff in business. Like you, like you know how to obviously get people's books in front of all this media, but you do other things as well. So I'm wondering what made you decide to focus on the books and how do you see that as a way to grow a business? Well, um, I have been working um, with doctors, lawyers, authors, and entrepreneurs for quite some time. In fact, when I was in college, I went to uh, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I brought in authors to speak at our university. I was director of student activities and then later student body president. And I brought in guys like uh, F. Lee Bailey, uh, David Frost, uh, you know, my, my, our, our team, our committee, and so forth. We brought in Leonard Nimoy. We, we just brought in so many interesting people, and I was fascinated by the business. Then a local guy, a TV show host, got a hold of me and said, hey, Scott, I uh, represented a uh, Howard Hughes's aide, Gord Margolis, and, I, and I'd like you to promote the book. And I go, I don't know how to promote a book. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was, I was uh, 19 years old. And he said, no, yeah, no, you do. <laughs> and here, he did, let's just work on it together. So that was my first book. It was in college. And it was called Howard Hughes, The Hidden Years. And it was about how Howard Hughes had actually kind of uh, gone off the rails there. He, he basically had Alzheimer's at the time. They, weren't, they were just thought he was a little nuts. But uh, it was an interesting experience. I, and that was my first book that I promoted in college. So that uh, kind of goes way back. It was fun. It was a fun experience. Uh, and then later, uh, after graduating from college, I got into our family business. So our family's in the hotel business. And so uh, we were very good at trying to make uh, a dollar go as far as it could. I can tell you that. My dad was an expert at it. And uh, I learned a lot from him about promotion. Uh, some of the first uh, promotions where kids eat free in a restaurant were done by my dad. And things that uh, he actually did this thing called the Johnny Billington Clean Plate Club. And it was, uh, if, you, if you clean your plate, you get a free turkey dinner. And you, then, you, then, of course, then it brings in dad and mom for the next Sunday. Or the, two weeks later, they get a free, the kid gets a free dinner, and mom and dad get to pay. So anyway, it was a, I've learned a lot of my uh, promotional things from the ground up. And then uh, I promoted some events in my hometown. One was called the Plymouth Ice Sculpture Spectacular. And this was like the, it became one of the largest uh, ice carving events in North America. 
And through that experience of promoting things and marketing things with no budget, that gave me the expertise to promote things with a budget and know what people want, know what the media is looking for, and know how to get a story placed. So it's like it's it's a 100% organic experience for me. Um, and then uh, and then at one point, uh, a, a romance writer got a hold of me and said, "Scott, can you promote my romance book?" And I go, "Never, I don't even read romance books." but I'll, I'll give it a whirl. So we did. And then it started one thing after the other. It's just kind of amazing. So I've been doing this for over 25 years. Anyway, uh, we can talk all day about this sort of thing, but it's been an organic, a, a growing experience. And the more we do, the more we do. And, and, uh, and now we've, at any given time, we're promoting six, seven, eight authors at one at, at a time. So, yeah. I mean, a few great things right away uh, from Scott's answer. I mean, uh, a lot of people that think, you know, if you want, if you have a problem in business, how do you solve it? Throw money at it. And that could be the wrong approach because sometimes you throw money in the wrong way. And I feel like if you are like Scott, where uh, you do start with something where you have no budget, you just become really good uh, with the budget. So I you mean, get right really now, creative. creative when you have yeah. no money. When you have no money, you've got to create, you have to be creative. I also worked for a billionaire, Tom Monahan. Um, and, uh, he had, he was the founder of Domino's pizza. Okay. And I can tell you that we went, I went from a, a family business that really didn't have a lot of money to work with to a company that had a, a lot of money to work with. And it was quite a contrast. And you look at things differently when you have a lot more money. You're, I, I, in the end, I think people are less creative because money is the easiest way to, uh, to, uh, make things happen. Okay. But with promotion, you've got to actually have a good idea. You've got to have something interesting. You've got to make people want to do something, try something, because you're selling the actual virtues of the product or service or item. So I, I it just it's a, it's different than just saying here buy my my widget. It's fifty bucks or whatever. It's you've got to convince people that it's a good idea. So anyway, I cut my teeth on on the promotion side of things, and I think it served me well in my career in book marketing. And I'd really love to get into both of those uh, uh, budget approaches because there's some people listening to this right now who they're on a shoestring budget. They don't want to spend that much money. There are other people who they've got a hoard of money that they just want to spend on their book. Uh, so I'm wondering first if we could hit the uh, how do you promote a book when you have no budget because I feel like that's more people. Uh, okay. But then later on about the other one. So one of the things that I, that I do uh, with, with people, if – with no budget, here's what authors can do, okay? You go to my blog, which is book-publicist.com. I'm a book publicist, I've got a book-publicist.com. There are tons of articles on there that I've written about how to promote your book. Many times I just implement what's on, the, my, own, what, on my own blog for my clients because they don't have time. They've got the money to, uh, to hire me, but they don't have the time to implement it. So, for example, one of the things on there is a list of the book awards that people can go after. There's 43 book awards. There's way more than that, but we've kind of vetted 43 of them. And so uh, you apply for the award, you submit your book, either a, a physical copy or a paperback or a Kindle version, and then you pay your $50, $75 entry fee. And then in a couple of months, they say, hey, you won, or hey, you were going to honorable mention, or hey, don't call us again. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, but the thing is, if you get an award, then you then put it in a press release and you send it out. Or you tweet about it. You put it in Facebook. You say, hey, I just won the XYZ Florida Book Festival Award for uh, fiction uh, in uh, or, or romantic fiction or whatever genre that it's in. And guess what happens? Uh, the more awards you win, the more credibility you get. And as a result, uh, the media and other people will take a look at your book. I can tell you time and time again where I've had this happen. So I'll tell you one time where we had a lady who I, I sent, a local uh, Michigan woman whose book was about caregiving, and I had sent a press release out to you know, all the TV stations in, in, in Michigan in this market area, and they uh, didn't do anything with it. Then she won an award, Florida Book Festival Award or something. I submitted a press release. Guess what? It's like, oh, we'd love to have your author on. Because she's, you know, he's an award-winning author. So a couple things happens there. You get credibility. Uh, it, people take notice. And nobody in the media wants to make a mistake, okay? They really don't. 
if they are going to put somebody on TV, they want to know that they've done an interview before. They don't want to really put the first first timer on. Uh, they really want to uh, hedge their bets. And when it gets to the national level, you're not likely to get a national hit unless you've done local TV news. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so you really need to get those uh, TV uh, clips under your belt and on your website. And so that you have a, what do you call a, um, a, uh, a, 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 a file of B-roll so that uh, people you could give the people you say yes I was on this show that show another, sh another show and uh, here's what I look like and that's what they want to see okay it takes the it takes the gamble out of it so anyway so book awards a big thing go after book awards uh, I just put a post up today uh, Mark that talks about TED Talks and uh, TED Talks are really great and if you can do a TED Talk then that's another credible thing to do and it's your website Facebook page and uh, it helps with speaking arrangements, okay? So those are two things you can do uh, that are basically free. You know, low cost, I should say. Yeah, I mean, the TED Talk is definitely free if you, it's just about relationship building. The awards, I mean, there's some money you put into that, but I mean, if you put down maybe $100, and I believe some of these you can get in for free to enter, not, not all of them, but like if you even put down 100, you get it some rewards. I mean, uh, the amount of national publicity that gets, that's an easy ROI, so. Uh, it's an easy one. Really yeah. And so there's, there's a number of things you can do. And just the, the, the issuing a press release in itself is free. And most writers are good writers. If you follow a format or template, you can put together a nice press release and you talk about the fact that your book is out there. Now, I mean, this is what I do for my clients, but um, it's a, uh, uh, but people can do it for themselves. Now it's, you can argue all day long about whether or not it's more effective to have a publicist do it or whether you could do it yourself. And listen, some of the best projects I've ever seen are done by the author themselves. But often an author doesn't know when to stop talking. <laughs> that I have found. And they yeah, think their book yeah. is the greatest thing ever written. And uh, they just don't know when to turn it off. And uh, <laughs> that's where they get into the problem when they try pitching their own stuff. Okay. So uh, I've never met an author that wasn't proud of their work. It's like saying right. uh, my baby, Right, my grandbaby's yeah. ugly. Well, no one's ever going to say that. I mean, right. geez, you know, it's uh, it's uh, their book is their work, and their their work is their effort, and they think it's great. So, uh, but anyway, um, so a press release to the right, you know, outlets uh, about your book can be very successful, and that's why people hire me because publicity still is the best, most effective way to get exposure for a book. It's definitely the most cost effective. I'll give you an example. Business card size ad in the New York Times book review on Sunday. Guess how much that costs, Mark? Oh, business card size ad. Uh, Take a stab at it. Uh, I'll, I'll say 500. 10 grand. Wow. 10 grand. I, I knew it was going to be either kidding. really low or really high. So I, <laughs> I went for the low one. That was a trick question, but 10 grand. For the business card size ad. Now, you know what you can put on a business card that it can be you know, read in the New York Times on Sunday that'll catch somebody's eye? Not a lot, right. okay? So, but a nice write-up with your book cover the size of your hand with another uh, article next to it the size of your hand, that's uh, worth uh, an incredible amount of, uh, of money. Now, one of the things that individual independent authors uh, have trouble with, and I work with mostly independent authors, self-published, is that the New York Times isn't going to cover their book. And the reason is because it's not backed by Simon & Schuster, Hachette, uh, Random House, and the big publishing companies. Okay, that's the problem. So uh, very, very unusual to have a self-published book or independent press book get covered by the New York Times. It does happen, don't get me wrong, but it, the vast majority are from the publishing companies because they want to talk about a book that's got wide distribution. There's, they have reasons. It's vetted some more than your typical uh, self-published book and so forth, but that's, that's a reality. So your best bet is to get local coverage and, you know, in a paper like uh, Gannett Newspapers. Gannett Newspapers also owns um, USA Today. So if you get an article in your local paper that's, Gannett, that's connected to the Gannett Corporation, guess what? That might have a shot at getting into USA Today. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, but that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fact. And I see it happen all the time. 
where a little a little little feature story gets uh, picked up by a little local Gannett paper, and next thing you know, it's nationwide in in the USA Today, and through some of their other channels because those those newspapers are looking for content all over the country. So the, all the other ones in the Gannett chain pick it up. Same kind of thing that can happen with national public radio. You get a local hit on a, on a national public radio piece, that can also get picked up and packaged and put around the country. It's made available to other stations in the NPR network. So a lot of little tricks uh, to, to leverage it, and there's really nothing better than, than PR to, to uh, get a book promoted. It's the most cost-effective way. So. And uh... – I mean, it's really fascinating how all these papers, like they need content and repurposing is the thing, not just for content marketers, but also for newspapers. So uh, I definitely see how something in a right. local paper could end up in the USA Today. Isn't that funny? Now, the, the, the follow-up question to this was the, what do you do with if you have money? Right. Okay. So here's what we've done with people that have had money. I've had... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of amazing how much people want to throw at a book, but they have different motivations. You know, I work with some clients that they really don't care if they sell books. They're looking to to get their their if the book is a, is a brochure, a calling card. It gives them credibility, so they use that book to help them get you know a ten million dollar client. Okay, that pays them you know fifty basis points a year to manage their their family money. Okay, so that book gives them the credibility or adds to the credibility they already have to help them get a, a client in the door to manage their money. That's one example. Another example, I've had clients where they are really big on speaking engagements. That's what they want. They want to get a five, ten, or five or $10,000 speaking gig. And you just start thinking about the books you got to sell to make five or 10 grand. You're way better off, uh, uh, unless they're selling them in your sleep, you're better off with a five or $10,000 speaking gig. Uh, and so some authors use that, is it, is they use the book to help them get gigs. And then in addition, there are authors that are just interested in clients. You know, they are charging 50 to $100,000 for a client uh, to do consulting services. So the book gives them the credibility that they need to demonstrate their capability. And so that's another reason that uh, people do it. Now I had another client here this fall that uh, this past year that, um, was very focused on selling his book on uh, to a high net worth individuals. And it had to do with real estate and stuff like this, uh, real estate investment. And so um, they uh, wanted to buy ads on Fox TV and CNBC. So we did on their behalf buy those ads mm -hmm. for a 30 second commercial. You won't believe how much those are, they're a fortune. And um, we, um, <laughs> I'm telling you what, it was uh, we. It was probably a seventy-five thousand uh, dollar purchase just on TV time on those two channels. Okay, so uh, but if that's what you if that's what makes it work for you, you know, then it's then then by all means do it. And if you've got the, if you've got the money to do it, then you know go for it. Uh, but um, and then we did the you know regular PR for them as well. So. It's uh, kind of fascinating. Uh, then some people say they want to be a New York Times or a, or a USA Today or a Wall Street Journal bestseller. Well, that's a whole different strategy. And, that, that, uh, and, uh, and that's something that needs to be implemented. Now, one of the things that, that we do as a re regular routine thing now is uh, Amazon bestseller. And, um, and that is something that can be done uh, by you know, picking the right categories, uh, promoting the book on a certain dates, and, uh, and, and doing some things all, you know, above board, above table, uh, things that uh, will help Amazon discover the book and then promote it themselves through their algorithms. So there's a lot of, there's a lot to this business. Uh, and Mark, I'm sure you can appreciate this. You're dealing with it all the time. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of fun to, uh, to keep, keep up with it all. And to, uh, I love talking to authors who have like cracked the code and it's like, Oh wow, this is great. So we'll, we'll, well, it's exciting to work with somebody who's really drilling into it to find some ways to get the word out and promote their book. So anyway, I got to take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, categories are definitely pretty important on Amazon. You do have to reach out to them. Something I recently learned from Michelle Culp, uh, who I know you uh, work yeah. with. 
Uh, she told me about that. Like that's the first time yeah. I heard about like, you know, you have to contact Amazon to get the categories you want. There's a tab on like KDP uh, below your book. I go support or contact. That's where you ask them to change the categories, but just really quick. I know you mentioned PR and I love the tactic, but where do we go to release those press releases? Because I feel like some people, they think they have to do like hundreds or even thousands of dollars for PR. I think it's a big misconception. So uh, where do you, like what websites do you use to release the PR stuff? Well, I use a number of different things that are proprietary that I have. I keep, I maintain databases. Okay. So I've been in this business a long time. So I have databases of reviewers that I've worked with over the years that uh, will review a book on Amazon. I've got media contacts. I can pick up the phone, call them or email them or whatever and say, Hey, look, I got a great new author. It's perfect for your book. Boom. And then they line it up. So those are, those are, uh, that's the benefit of working with someone like myself, who's actually in the business that knows people. And that's kind of what you're tapping into when you hire a publicist, you're tapping into their network and so forth. But on the do it yourself side, uh, I mean, you got to compile the databases yourself. I mean, so if you, let's say your book is on, um, on golf. Okay. Then, then maybe you need to uh, reach out to the sports writers that cover golf at various publications around the country, like Golf Digest, like the magazine side of things, ESPN, although not for long, they're going to be going out, and some other uh, entities that are covering that topic, or some individuals. So you just have to find them. Now, if you're writing about a topic, there's a good chance that you know who these people are because you've, you're reading articles about them already. You know, if you're writing a topic, if you're writing, if you're writing about golf, then you probably know something about golf, Theoretically, you should, and you should know some of the best uh, feature writers out there. So you should be able to reach out to them on a personal level and say, then, you know, give them a pitch about the book, introduce yourself, the book, and give them something to bite on. Okay. Give them something interesting. You know, the fact that you've written a book, nobody cares. I can tell you that right now. Nobody's waiting for anybody's book. Okay. Bottom line. Nobody's waiting for your book, my book, or anybody else's. You've got to give them a reason to care. You got to give them a reason to be interested, okay? And uh, you know, what are you going to find out when you read this book? Is it going to change your life, improve your life? Is it going to uh, make you a better person? You're going to end up with more money, more time. I mean, what's? I mean, you've got to go with the benefits. So often, I find authors are really, uh, really focused on, hey, I wrote a book. You should read it. It's a great book. Mm. Well, that doesn't tell me about what's in the book. You know, you should read this book. Will help you save time, save money. You know. Better, uh, better sex life or whatever it is you're promising, okay, or whatever else that you're, that you're talking about. You've got to sell the benefits of the book. And what is in it for the audience of, you know, CBS TV or the audience of the, you know, Chicago Tribune? Why should they care about this book? They need to care because there's something in it that they're going to, that, that they want to read because it'll help them improve their life. Five things that are in your kitchen that you need to throw out today that, uh, you know, think about the teasers they do on TV. It's like, uh, you know, tune back in in five minutes. We'll have five reasons why you need to get rid of half the stuff in your refrigerator. And you go, what? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you know, a tease that will make people go, I got to find out what's, uh, you know, on my refrigerator. I got to throw out. So this is the. You've got to think like a, a, a you got to be promotion minded. You've got to think about that, that, you know, the way that the TV people think and, and so forth. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> and so anyway. I mean, it's great to have this uh, mindset where you are thinking like what they want instead of uh, me getting all this exposure from you. And I mean, there are a lot of people who have written books and there's just such little time. I mean, I see that on Breakthrough Success. I have to be more selective with the guests who I have on the show. And I mean, I like what I'm doing and stuff, but I mean, like if you look at NBC and like uh, CNN and Fox, like those people are getting like probably thousands of different pitches each day or uh, whatever ridiculous number it is. And, uh, you know, like the fact that you're an author, there's certainly more you have to uh, put in there, as Scott mentioned. And I like how Scott said that, you know, you can do this by yourself, but it definitely takes more time. And I see Scott as a book publicist, someone who can definitely speed things up for you. 
uh, get you the results. Uh, so I love how he's offering you both options where you can do it yourself. You can go do Scott's blog and see what's working, or you can uh, hand over the work to Scott. So definitely a great approach there. Yeah. Thank you. The, um, you know, it's uh, with Google now, everything is, I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's so easy to find you, you find that you, you find the topic and you find the publication, you find the writer, you get their email, everything is available to everybody right now. I mean, there's very few people that are hidden away. Now they may not answer the phone. I can tell you this, uh, 20 years ago, or I forget exactly, but I remember, yeah, maybe you're too young for this, but uh, remember it was 60 Minutes, a guy named Andy Rooney? Yes. Remember a old guy named Andy Rooney, and he had the little closing thing at the end of the yeah. segment? I remember, I, I picked up the phone, called him up direct, and it's like, you, you couldn't even dream of something like that. These guys don't answer their phone anymore. Well, he's dead, but he's not answering the phone anymore. But the point is, is that they're way more accessible back, you know, in the day. Now, the hide behind all these guys, for the most part, I'm not condemning the media. I'm just, this is the way humankind is right now. But the people are behind the uh, voicemail. You know, they don't look at their email. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of stuff through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, believe it or not. So I think that uh, if you're not on those platforms, you're missing an opportunity because their voicemail is full. Nobody answers the phone and says, oh, hold for a moment. I'll connect you to, you know, so-and-so. That's, that, those days are kind of gone. And uh, email, they're getting two, three, four, five hundred emails a day. They can't even find the email. Uh, I remember one time a guy from Bloomberg TV, Bloomberg Radio, called me up and said, hey, Scott, I got your uh, thing here. I want to definitely talk to your uh, guy about whatever it was, some business thing. And he says, uh, I, know, he says uh, I know you sent me the book. But he says, will you send it again? I go, yeah, sure, no problem. He says, I know, it's, it, it, this, this book is on my desk, but I can't find it. I know it's here. He said, I can't find it. Seriously. So I sent it to his home address, okay? That's what the world is. One time I was in Fox News uh, in uh, New York in the, uh, in the newsroom, and um, they, was, they had everybody's desk yet. Manila envelopes stacked like five high, ten high with books and all kinds of stuff. And it was just, I looked around and I thought, well, no wonder they can't find anything. And that's no, I'm not condemning them. This is the way the, the world is, okay? There's just so much, they're inundated with stuff. They're mm -hmm. inundated with stuff. And then since 9-11 and some of these uh, ricin attacks and some of these other things where the people put powder in there, it's harder to get a book or something into the area uh, because it goes to an off-site place. They sort it out, oh. and then they see if it's got some poison in it, and they bring it in. Unless, I mean, there's ways to do it, but, um, you know, they're trying to cut out all the nut jobs. But it makes our, everybody's job more difficult, okay? Uh, so, so email is still a great way to go. Um, texting, if you start texting someone's phone, and if you happen to get their cell phone and you don't have a relationship with them, that's a problem. I wouldn't do that. I, I, I would suggest one of the most economical things for people to do is go to LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and try to, you know, reach out and uh, reach some folks like that through the, in the media. I've done it many. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Even people that I know, I'll say, geez, you know, I'm thinking they didn't answer my email. They didn't answer my phone, my phone call, but they'll answer the tweet back. And I'll say, go check your email. I just sent you, you know. And for whatever reason, it gets, it seems to cut through the clutter. And that's really what it boils down to. You got to get someone's attention if you're going to sell them something. So if you don't have their attention, you can't sell them. So. And I, I like the social media approach. I've definitely been using LinkedIn a lot to get on more stages. Like one of my goals is to get on 20 stages in 2020. LinkedIn is going to be a big catalyst for me because I'm seeing a lot of stuff from there already and social media definitely a really great place to go definitely a great habit to go on social media think how can i reach out to the press or podcast hosts or uh people who organize public speaking events and like depending on what you want to do uh, but i'm wondering scott if you could share with us any of the other habits you've developed that have been essential for 
uh, your ability to just uh, achieve success with marketing books? Um, I think it's uh, being available all, you know, quite often. I mean, I like, I, I, I come from a, the, the, my family is in the hotel restaurant business. So we work seven days a week. Okay. So working seven days a week is not a problem. Okay. I don't really want to work seven days a week, but it's, but the nature of our business now mm -hmm. is that things happen all the time. I mean, I've gotten stuff in New York times at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Cause I was there answering the phone. I was there answering the email, you know, uh, half a life is showing up to be available. And so I, I think that's an important, an important thing. People have uh, cancellations in, in, uh, the, uh, in the business, uh, they have openings at the last minute. And so I can fill an opening for any radio talk show host anytime, 24 or seven, anytime I can do that. And I have, but I think being available is important. It's a habit of mine and it's, you know, answering the phone, I try to answer the phone. Now there's so many dog on robo calls. It kind of drives you mad, yeah. but uh, I think I got their number. So I, <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's uh, it's a challenge, but I, I try to be accessible. And one of the things I think when I have a, a good relationship with a client is we have a collaborative relationship where they call me and say, or they send me a text. Hey, here's an article I just saw that might be a good angle for us for this, uh, for my book. And I say, oh, cool, all right, great. So I like a, a collaborative relationship. It's, it's healthy and we got a little give and take and so forth. So, uh, I, but I think being available is an important part. And, and I like clients that are available too, quite frankly. I mean, if I get a, an opportunity for somebody and I get a booking, the, the people I'm booking it, the, the radio show or the TV show, or whatever, they need to know right now. I can't be, you know, don't call me two days from now and say, oh, yeah, I can do that. Well, th that opportunity is coming on. Mm -hmm. You got to be the, 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 the best client for me is somebody who's responsive and who gets back to me in a timely fashion about opportunities. That makes a difference. You know, we were at the publicity summit a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the one of the uh, magazine people said, hey, this sounds like a great idea. This book you're talking about. I need a 400 word article uh, and I'll publish it uh, right away. I texted my client. I said, I need a 400 word article with five things that you should throw out in your kitchen right now that are killing you. That was the essence of it. Before that session was done, I had the 400 word article, 500 word article. Wow. Back. Now that's responsiveness. Okay. That is a good client. That's somebody who's trying to hustle and help me represent her in a positive way. And, and, and that makes my life easier. And it also is going to get her a hit that, that somebody else is not going to get, I can tell you, because she's responsive. That's great. That's what I need. That's what, that's what authors need to be. Yeah, I love how you mentioned the competitive nature of it, because there are such few spots available. And I mean, if you miss your spot, I mean, for a podcast like Breakthrough Success and for uh, radio, in some cases, it's a little different with the radio side. But you know, if you want to reschedule an interview, uh, depending on how the interview is missed, I'm more welcome to doing that. But again, if we're talking about uh, a international magazine or an international TV show or something like that, they're not going to say, oh, that's okay. You missed it. We can reschedule. Uh, so definitely great to bring up the competitive side. Uh, and for people who want to learn more about you, uh, we've been talking about how you're a book publicist. We uh, mentioned your web you mentioned your website also so for people who want to uh, just follow you on your journey maybe even inquire about your uh, services where can they go well uh, book dash marketing dash expert.com so it's book marketing expert.com separated by dashes that's uh, the best place and uh, and then my and I, because I'm a book publicist I also own the the uh, the uh, domain book dash publicist.com book dash publicist.com and that's got all kinds of articles that are useful tips and uh, it's just good stuff that'll help authors in their journey it talks about book designers how to find a good book designer you know people that can you know book shepherds I, I was talking to a fellow yesterday from Chicago his book is three quarters done and I go when do you think you're gonna have it done you go, oh maybe October I go that's not good enough mm -hmm. and if you hire a book uh, a ghostwriter and get it done. Just get it done. Pay, you know, you're gonna pay five, 10, 15, 20, whatever it is. If you can afford it, pay to get it done. And he can afford it. 
It's like, just get it done. It's you're, you're missing opportunity. Every day your book's not published and ready to go. You're missing opportunity. Okay. So um, anyway, but those are the two best websites, bookmarketingexpert.com and uh, bookpublicist.com, separated by hyphens. So. <laughs> Scott, great stuff in this episode. Those links will be in the show notes. Uh, but I mean, it was a pleasure to meet you at the National Publicity Summit. Pleasure to meet you again on the show. So thank you so much for coming on Breakthrough Success and sharing your great stuff with us. Thank you, Mark. It's been a total pleasure. I hope it's been useful.